My name's Diane Robertson and this is my co-host Jeremy Wood. Welcome to Just Down the Road. You know what today, Diane, I think would be a great show would be to showcase some of the, the finer charities in Kansas City and, yep. and uh, exhibit how you and yours can go out and participate, have some fun, and do a little bit of good at the same time. So uh, sit back, relax, and take notes. This is Just Down the Road. Harvesters is a great place to start if you're looking for a way to contribute to a charitable organization. Maybe you just don't have a lot of funding to do so, but you've got a healthy body. God gave you two hands and two feet and a good mind, so you're looking for something to do. Well, they've got all kinds of things for you to do down there. And the good thing is you can be as young as six years old to do it. So parents, this is a good way to teach a, a, a very important lesson to your children right at the very start. My initial reaction to Harvesters, oh my goodness, it's huge. You walk in and there's bins everywhere, long rows of them. Everything's very well organized, which I love. Thank you very much. With signs above it and huge font, which I can see. I love that too. Uh, it was great. Excellent first experience. We're with the Big Cheese here. This is Karen here and the CEO. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to see you. And tell us a little bit about how this got started. I mean, did you think about this as a kid and you wanted to do charity work or what? Well, I have been a volunteer. I started as a volunteer with Harvesters 23 years ago. I've been on the staff for 12 years. And I just think it's real important that we feed people in our community. So that was really what connected me to this organization was our mission. How many people are you feeding out of this center every year? Each week there's about six, over 60,000 people that receive food assistance through Harvester's network of agencies. So last year we distributed 36 million pounds of food to oh the community. Oh my gosh, hallelujah. Hunger's the big problem. I think, you know, you were surprised about the size of Harvester's, but it reflects the need for food assistance right here in our community. Yeah, yeah. well we hear yeah. lots and lots on the news of other countries and, and places in yes. poverty. And it's so easy to forget in America where, you know, most people go home to a nice warm house and drive nice cars and have nice clothes and maybe they don't, you know, they go, they skip a meal here and there and they, oh, I'm so hungry. That's I've heard, just you. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Yeah. But, you know, we have the problem right here in our own backyard and yeah. it's so cool to see facilities like this in place. Yes, the, the recent USDA statistics that came out indicated that one in seven one in seven in our country needs food assistance. Oh my gosh. And we see about one in four children now are growing up in poverty, which means that many times their families cannot provide food assistance to them. If you think, ah, I'm just throwing a can in here and throwing a can in there and you're not doing any good, you're wrong. And if you go down and help them out, They'll even tell you at the end of your uh, little tour of duty there exactly how many people you helped. It's, it's really something that will make you feel good. Any group can come down as well. Your church, your temples, your organizations, anything from Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Eagle Scouts. Just come down to Harvesters and they'll put you to work. You know, Harvesters is very mission driven. We help feed people and people that otherwise might go hungry. And so we want the families and the young people, the adults, everyone to know the difference that they're making by their time being spent here at Harvester. So one thing that I did not know, which I love, and I think everybody should do it, there's my vote, birthday parties for kids. You can go down there and have your kids jump in and start helping sort food and explain what's going on and why these kids like them need food and need meals. And then there's cake afterwards, which Harvesters provides. Now that's just a win-win. It's not the normal traditional birthday party, but it sure is valuable as far as teaching lessons to young people. And if you want to do it, just go online or give them a call, make a reservation, and they'll help you get set up. Karen, thank you so much for thank spending you. some time with thank us. You. We appreciate it. Now, where can we go to work at? Yeah. Well, we're going to put you right to work over here. We have a big tote full of food that has been collected through food drives. Now, you can't eat this, Jeremy. Do you, you understand the process? So, I'm, come on. You don't get to eat it. We're going to put you to <laughs> I'm work. Totally throwing him Not under the eating. bus. <laughs> so, uh, we need all that food sorted out into these categories so it can be boxed up and made available to the can community. Can we wear hairnets? Yes. Oh, sweet. We have various stylish, Meat very low? attractive hairnets for Excellent. you. Excellent. I can't wait. Good. Thank you. It's <laughs> well, really Karen, a pleasure thank you so meeting much. you. 
much, you. and we're uh, we're happy. If you need more information about harvesters, go to our website just down the road. Go to the Our Friends link. You'll see harvesters right there. All the things she's talked about, you can go to their website, make reservations, contact them, all the information you need to be a part of this very, very important program just down the road in Kansas City. Thanks again, Karen. Thank you. Let's go. Thank you. Okay, listen, the hairnet, this will be great, Jeremy. Now, you put it down on your eyes and say, yell meatloaf out. I think the best part about harvesters, of course, is the feeling uh, in your soul when you walk out. I mean, the fact that you've made such a difference and you've fed a lot of people and just sorting food and doing things like that. But can you imagine that every can of food you touch is going to feed somebody? And that's extraordinary. been a big day of help so far. We've already been to Harvesters and we're off to Animal Haven and I've worn my vest in honor of my little furry friends. It's not real. <clears throat> well Harvesters is all set up for us to help our fellow man, the, the human race, but Animal Haven of KC is for all of the animal lovers out there. Well clearly the dogs are attracted to you Jeremy. <laughs> yeah yeah they're all barking for me. Here we stand at Animal Haven in Merriam, Kansas. We've left Harvesters. <laughs> what a great experience that was and standing with us now is Teresa Johnson and Teresa what's your official title with Animal Haven? I am the Chief Operating Officer here at Animal Haven. COO for Woo! those of you keeping track. Another Excellent. Top of the line, as you call big cheese, big we get cheese. to talk Only to. Big cheese, only the best so. for us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the big dog, maybe that's it. Oh, yeah, that's oh good. very good, <laughs> very good. Top cat. Tell us what Animal Haven does. Animal Haven is a nonprofit, no kill animal shelter. Uh, we take in about 4,000 pets every year. So you talk about a no-kill pet facility. Explain a little bit further what you mean by that. That means that they are never euthanized for space, that um, they can be here as long as they need to be here till we find them a home. If they have medical conditions, we treat them. Um, if they have behavioral issues, we try to rehabilitate them. So they are never um, euthanized. Uh, so you, you have a dog whisperer here. on premises at any Caesar Milan's? That's pretty good. Uh, we, we try to uh, train our staff so that they can uh, help the dogs with whatever needs they might have, medical, behavioral, whatever. It's all about dominance. <laughs> oh That's my it. gosh, whatever. And the one that likes your leg. <laughs> yeah. Better yeah. than that. So you might be wondering who can help here after you've seen this fine footage. Well, anybody can help. Corporations, churches, scouts, again, just like at Harvesters, just like really, you know, any charity organization, they need help. And not only with the animals, they need, you know, office help and they need cleaning and sweeping and, you know, everything under the sun that has to do with animals, basically. They'd love it. We came here to talk and look around and all that, but mm -hmm. Diane and I are also very valuable workers. Okay. Valuable. So we valuable. can go for upwards of 15, oh. 20 minutes straight, straight. With no without snack. a break. Okay. And, no snack. Uh, we do yeah. need water on standby. Okay. There's so a bucket out there. So what you can, can you do? What, what can in. we do? Where, where can you put us to work today so we can get some stuff done for Animal Haven? Well, actually, um, I do have two tasks for you guys that you can do. And uh, as I said, sometimes the most valuable things for us are not directly related to pets, and that's what we're going to have you guys do today. All right, well, we promised Mr. Robertson that Diane would not come home with any pets today, I so know. it might be best that we don't Keep work Keep me away with from the dogs. <laughs> I want one. I want one. Well, we're not just TV show hosts. We like to help out as much as we can, where we can. And after I had asked uh, if there was anything we could do, of course, they found us something to do. And as is usually the case when these scenarios arrive, Diane did a real good job of supervising me working. Well, they put us to work. And, you know, of course, as it always is, I'm doing a lot. And Jeremy's talking with everybody. Well, I'm just so glad to be giving of myself. And it just feels good to come out here and, and do these windows. Jeremy, you're missing some. Listen, you, gotta, you really got to put your arm into it, you know, and yeah, yeah, you know, and scrub hard anyway um it's just good you know that i've been out here working now just for several minutes and uh i'm just oh my god oh this means war <sighs> oh my goodness i'm telling you all this is exhausting i've been doing this now for probably four minutes and clearly i'm worn out and jeremy jeremy how's it going in there yeah, it's going well. So, you know, this is great. Bring your family out here and uh, 
you know, I finally found somewhere to sit down because it's just exhausting. And uh, I feel good, feel good about myself. The great thing about Animal Haven of KC is everything you do, whether it's with your family, your Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, your church, or just by yourself, everything you do is geared toward getting that animal adopted. So it's really cool. Well, I've tried hard not to take a dog, and don't tell them, but I put one in the car. <laughs> but anyway, it's been great out here, and Jeremy, gosh. I just, I don't even know what to say. This is an incredible experience. I want to yeah. be a dog and come here. We had a good time. This is this would be kind of like a, a hotel for them, a little I bit of a so. resort. Spa. If you're in the market for a dog or a, a cat, or you want to come out and stretch your legs and do some work for good, come on out to Animal Haven in Merriam, Kansas. Again, you can find all their information on our website under the Our Friends link on JustDownTheRoad.net. So thanks again, ladies. Thank you. Are you ready, Jeremy? Got a ball what? for you. Ready, ready, ready. It's a ball. Oh, right. Here we go. On, here please. we go. Get it. Get it, Jeremy. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, I just oh, know him. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs>brings us out to Screenland Theater in downtown Kansas City and standing with us is Butch Rigby the owner of Screenland and again give me the title of the thank you Walt Disney what would be the the official title there again well I'm the chairman of the board of thank you Walt Disney okay. we're a 501 so you're the Frank Sinatra yeah I'm the Frank Sinatra <laughs> exactly yeah another big cheese see we're doing big cheeses the whole that's time. that's right you know how it is when you're big stars like us the big cheeses just come to us and you know they want to know everything we know that's how it is the one thing that really caught our eye when looking for kind of off-the-wall things to do in Kansas City with your family was the Thank You Walt Disney Project, and we'll let you tell us more about what that is. Well, you know, Thank You Walt Disney was an organization formed specifically to sort of memorialize or at least, uh, you know, uh, make record of the history that Walt Disney had in Kansas City in the Midwest and really document his and all of the other animators' uh, careers here in Kansas City and really the foundations uh, of the Disney company. Historical fact here for you on Just Down the Road, you're welcome. All of the original cartoonists that eventually went off and formed the company, Walt Disney, uh, started at the Laugh-O-Gram studio right in downtown Kansas City, a little 10,000 square foot space. That is the place that it all started right here in Kansas City. What is the Laugh-O-Gram studio? Well, the Laugh-O-Gram studio is the location, the building where Walt Disney uh, started Laugh-O-Gram Films in 1921. The company lasted a year and a half, and uh, he went bankrupt and went off to California. Uh, however, it was in that very building that he would feed a little semi-tame mouse to the fascination of all his employees who would come up on the desk and eat out of his hand. And that would later, in later years in California, be the inspiration for their new cartoon character, uh, Mortimer Mouse, because that's what they called him. And Mortimer was uh, quickly renamed Mickey by Walt's wife, uh, as is usually the case. She <laughs> won the argument. But uh, uh, the world found its, uh, really, its pop culture icon at a little building in Kansas City. Kansas City may not be the birthplace of animation, but uh, it is where it was conceived. Way to go, Walt. Whoa. Wow. So what we're going to do is uh, about 2,500 square feet on the second floor where the original office is for the Laugh-O-Gram studio. So that portion will be recreated as it was in 1922. Uh, we're going to have an animation lab. We're going to have uh, a little bitty uh, kind of a small movie theater, 50-seater, where you can look at some of the documentary films about what happened in uh, not only in Kansas City animation, but animation around the world, documentaries on Walt Disney, uh, Biworks, uh, uh, and some of the actual films that were shot in this building in Kansas City. Once Thank You Walt Disney is completed, wow, it is going to be a springboard for so many kids. It is a hands-on animation place, and I can't wait to see what it produces. Uh, so will you guys have programs where kids and families can come in and actually... Maybe go through some stuff and learn how to do it themselves? Absolutely. I mean, that's the point, interactive. Don't want some static lecture for children. Yeah. I want them to put their hands in it. I want them to be excited about it. Who knows? Uh, maybe 30, 40, 50 years from now, we'll look back at Thank You Walt Disney and have some great innovative animator or even better come out of that studio 
just because of the, the things that are being started today. All right. Well, Butch Rigby, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, we certainly appreciate it. Enjoy it. For more Thank information you. about Thank You Walt Disney, the Laughagram Studio, as well as the Screenland Theaters and all their locations, check us out online, just down the road.net. Go to our friends, and you'll see everything you need right there for Mr. Rigby's operations with Walt Disney and Screenland. And again, we thank you so much. stop was Habitat for Humanity and in case you don't know this is a phenomenal organization that provides homes for those that desperately need it and it was quite an experience. So Yana Gibson yeah. stands with us now and uh, we get the opportunity to talk to the person making all this happen here in Kansas City. Yana tell us about Habitat for Humanity how it came to be all the the history that made it one of the great charitable organizations of Kansas City. Wonderful. Um, Habitat started in 1976 in America's Georgia. The mission is to eliminate substandard poverty housing and to provide home ownership opportunities for families that are 30 to 50 percent of the median income or those families that can't get a traditional mortgage. Don't be intimidated either. Come on down to Habitat with your two hands and just help. You don't have to read blueprints and be a carpenter, any of that. Just show up. They're grateful for your help. Do you have any work that Diane and I might be able to do today? Maybe swing well, a few me, hammers or because no, no, you know, no. I, I think I you'd know. be perfect because you're very pretty and you're perky. <laughs> we try to do a show based on fact rather than fiction, Yana. So let's you know. No. Okay, <laughs> let me let me switch it. So you're hunky as well. So chunky, you both. he's chunky. I'll stick with hunky for two hundred. He can clean the walls with his backside. Show us, Jeremy. How's that work? <laughs> Fundraising for you. Okay. All right. On the roof for you. On the, the roof. roof. Okay. Woo! Well, I hope your insurance policy is strong because yeah. I'll probably put it to the test. <laughs> Actually, I do well around. I mean, my dad was very handy, and I know how to do a lot of things. It would shock you. You should see her with a waffle maker. I know. It's impressive <laughs> how many terrible, pieces terrible. she can turn that thing into. Listen, now you're not supposed to talk about this. <laughs> they put us to work right away. Well, after we chatted for a while and you know, had some snacks and stuff. And again, I worked, 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 and Jeremy did nothing. Mm. After talking with Yana, we got right to work. Well, let me clarify that. I got right to work, whereas Diane went right back into her supervisory role. All right, I'm here with uh, Jim Wright, and he's getting ready to show me how to lay some tile. First question I have, though, Jim, is do I have, I mean, it's tile. Do I have to wear a hard hat? Yeah, this is a very dangerous material. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It could. It could. What's it going to pop up off the floor well, and smack me I'm in the head? We're worried about her hitting you with a piece of tile, and it's for your own oh, protection. That's I, a good point. She might. So, <laughs> I'm just wondering. I mean, I don't mind safety and all that, but do we have any other color hats? No. no. Pink. Uh, and she told me that pink was your favorite color. See, Jeremy, come on. Keep Let me tell you something, Jim. About half the things that come out of Diane's mouth that aren't true, and the other half aren't worth listening to. I'll take your word for that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I am done. All right, switch me places. Let me do some of this. The great thing about it all is as you're working for them, you're learning skills that you can use in your own home, in your own apartment, or maybe to help just people in your own neighborhood. The icing on the cake was meeting Shelly. She was one of the women that got one of these houses, and she actually pulled out a hammer and helped build her own house. And let me tell you, walking in there with her when it was finished it was incredible. Well, we're inside of one of the Habitat for Humanity homes now, not houses being built, homes. homes. And with us is one of the homeowners, Shelly. Shelly, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. So tell us a little bit about your story, how you came into touch with Habitat for Humanity and how you came into your, your own home. I recently lost my husband in 06 to cancer and I was in a very large house and it was too much for me and I've always dreamed of owning my own home so this it was the opportunity of a lifetime. I also know how to handle a hammer now. Hey. I can get on a roof. I can do it all myself because they trained me to do that. So it's an educational process why you're going through the program. I've got a couple things around my house that uh, maybe Jeremy, we could talk. Sorry. Focus, focus. I'm uh, sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Shelly, we thank you so much for coming in and chatting with us and letting us into your beautiful home. And as I said, what I've got is some plaster of Paris products. <laughs> Jeremy. So, okay. All right. Well, thanks again, Shelly, and we'll uh, we'll uh, see you guys just down the road. All right. Thank you. <laughs>
Habitat for Humanity has this store called Restore. It's down off Front Street and 435. You just go down there and this place is absolutely full of anything you would need for your home. Last stop on the tour of all the great things that Habitat for Humanity in Kansas City does. And this is called Restore. Ah, uh, Restore is a treasure trove for things you need for your home. We're the anti-dumpster, we like to say. <laughs> this is the this is where this where the recovery facility for all those dumpsters you see in people's driveways that okay. uh, shouldn't be filled up. This is for treasure hunters. Yeah. yeah. If people wow. people come down for a certain thing. Sometimes we don't have that, but it's hard it's hard to walk out of here empty-handed. If I were to come in here and buy the kitchen sink or a door or some tiling or, or a carpet, where does the money go? How is it used? The proceeds go back to Habitat for Humanity to build new homes for families to give people a, a chance at home ownership. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, we'll cut this because I've got to do some shopping. Okay, <laughs> well, good. thanks for joining us today. We're wrapping up our charity show. It's been really great to get out and experience some of these charities, and we hope that you will get out and experience them as well. <laughs> That's right, Diane. We hope you, too, will lend your <laughs> okay. talents and abilities to all of these charities and maybe even some of the ones we didn't feature today. What are you, what are you doing? I got the signal. It's time to go to work. Yeah, it's time for something. <laughs> Before I do go off to work, though, hey, we, we've had a great time today, and we hope you did, too. If you have a chance, run on over to justdowntheroad.net. Check out all the great things we're doing. And then you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We've got all the information right there on our website. So for Diane Robertson, this is Jeremy Wood. We wish you all the best and tune in next time for more Just Down the Road. Bye. Now I've got to go. All right. Goodbye. And leave it to me to find things that I cannot say or show on television. Thank you. That's what I do. But you got to look at this fan. It's very funny. <laughs> and it has one of my favorite words in it. <clears throat> Big. I'm sorry. Uh, Diane has a problem and we're working to rectify it.